International Cocoa Organization has predicted that there will be an acute shortage of supply of cocoa beans on the world market by 2020. This has come about due to aging cocoa plantations and the loss of interest by the younger generation to go into cocoa farming in addition to cocoa competing with other crops such as palm for the farmer's attention. On the consumer end, the increase in appetite for chocolate in emerging markets such as Asia is placing a heavy demand on the crop. The benefit of this to the producer countries mean higher prices and a guaranteed demand for their produce. In response to this threat and opportunity, Ghana Cocoa Board, the governing body for Ghana, which is the world's second largest producer of cocoa and number one producer of premium quality cocoa, has positioned itself to ensure an increase in production and a sustained cocoa industry. You know, in the past, Cocoa Board used to buy the fertilizer, subsidize it, and then uh, uh, get some individual companies to sell it to their farmers. This time, myself and management have the support of the governing board. You know, we have a new governing board. Um, we took a decision that in order to motivate the local farm that over a century has supported um, the economy of Ghana, we would like to give them free fertilizer. And uh, our extension officers are also involved educating the farmers on how to apply the fertilizer. The importance of the use of fertilizer and the application of good agronomical practices, such as the use of good seedling, tree shading, pruning, mistletoe control weeding, and flood control measures by cocoa farmers cannot be overemphasized if the industry wants to experience financial growth that will benefit all stakeholders. 20. To ensure that the free fertilizer is applied properly and be of benefit to the farms, Cocoa Board has put in place strict programs and farm selection criteria. For young cocoa, non-bearing cocoa, cocoa which has not started bearing uh, pores, uh, the fertilizer that is given is only to help the growth of the seedlings or the young trees. So we give ammonium sulfate uh, and that one you give uh, uh, one bag per acre. For the bearing cocoa, which is the way we refer to as the matured cocoa, uh, up to the age of 30, uh, qualifies to receive the fertilizer, provided it doesn't have diseases. Following the introduction of the free fertilizer distribution scheme, Cocoa Board has also put in place measures to ensure the fertilizer reaches the assigned farms and is applied only on farms that will benefit from it. The selection for the, the distribution of the fertilizer is based on what happens at the farm level, not who the farmer is. Agriculture is not for them. So, I buy for myself. It's what your man, you can follow. Fertilizer is free. I'm part. 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 Now we have seven co cocoa producing regions in Ghana, so the fertilizers are consigned to them and they with their district officers ensure that the fertilizer is distributed to cocoa farms that meet the criteria that we set. I'm a bit trade. You walk out of Pazbu Guko. Yeah, true. D. Now we be on the basis of a card to do a very kind of so and sign your mouth. Fertilizer. If you acquire a buyer, no, 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 prospective farmers. Then those whose farms will be measured, they also, uh, we have the records. Because the measurement, it takes time. Uh, 
Na We encourage them to take their fertilizers in group because it's cheaper to transport in group. So their community selects a few leaders who come and then we check their names, their ID card to make sure they are part of their group. After they are going through that, then we look for their total, the vehicle that they come with, how many bags the vehicle can load and then we issue that to them. And then lastly, they take their way bill, sign the agreement form, and then the vehicle is off to the community. So if community A comes today, we look at the number of farmers that we have measured their farm from a particular community, and then we look at the stock level of our fertilizer, and then we buy them accordingly. So we have the name of the farmer, the age of the farmer is there, the farm location is also there, we have the farm size, and other details that we consider very relevant for this particular exercise. And then the type of fertilizer that we give to the farmer is also being captured. The quantity of bags that we give to the farmer is also there. So the fertilizer, sometimes it comes in three trucks, four trucks, five trucks, depending on the quantity that we receive, we invite the farmers accordingly. It is interesting to note that despite the great benefits derived from the application of fertilizer on cocoa farms, a number of farmers were not taking advantage of the subsidized fertilizer being provided by Cocoa Board in the past, with the farmers complaining they could not afford them. From 2004 up to last year, that is 2013, the Cocoa Board used to purchase the fertilizers, sell it as a subsidy of about 50% to the farmers. But, of course, fertilizer is not cheap. It means that every year we saw increases in the price of the fertilizer. Even so, even with a subsidy, the price to the farmer continued to increase. And we, farmers found it difficult to purchase even at a 50% subsidy. It became difficult for most of the farmers to get fertilizer because of the finances that is required even though it is subsidized to buy the fertilizer. So this year Cocoa Board realized that it's unable to get the farmers to apply the one the required quantity and also to get it on the right time and they were not also getting credit facility for the fertilizer and therefore it was very difficult for them to apply the fertilizer in most of the cases. So if a farmer is, uh, is to receive five bags or six bags, uh, we, the forms then come back to the district office, to the regional office, they call back to check. Or they call the farmer, well, your name is uh, Bar, what is the size of your farm, how many bags were delivered to you. Since the free fertilizer scheme was introduced, to date, Cocoa Board has distributed a large number of fertilizer to over 90% cocoa farms across Ghana. This year we bought the, well, the granular uh, fertilizers, which is the one that you, you broadcast. We bought 1.6 million bars. Uh, the, the granular fertilizers are the Asasura, Cocoa Feed and Cocoa Master.
So in addition, we have also distributed to farmers 700,000 liters of a fully fertilizer called Litovit. In addition to that, we have also uh, distributed to farmers almost 800,000 liters of Sidalco. This is another Sidalco liquid fertilizer. Now, these fertilizers, you put them together, is fertilizing over 1 million, nearly 1.1 million hectares of cocoa, which is around 64% of the tree stock. And this is historic because we believe that the system where we took over cocoa board took full control of the distribution and management of the fertilizers is serving well because by this time last year, most farms have not received anything. We have already received Asasira and cocoa feed totaling 1,313 bags and it has been distributed to farmers and all of them have been applied. Interestingly, the scheme has minimized the incident that used to occur in the past where subsidized fertilizer were smuggled by farmers to neighboring countries for resale. And as part of uh, the checks, we have designed a form for them. And, and on the form you have uh, the name of the farmer, uh, the fertilizer allocated, the, that's the quantity of fertilizer allocated, the size of the farm should be there, then the signature of the farmer and the person who issued the fertilizer's uh, signature will be there. Then we have the telephone numbers of the farmers. In fact, the trucks were being followed all the way from the warehouses to so when we when we do the distribution and then along the route to where the destination the final destination they also contact their fellow security men either the police or the bni so when the vehicle moves they also send information so they have vantage points where and where there are security men who will monitor whether the vehicle has passed after a period of time. Before they even get to the district, the district officer is informed of the consignment. I'm also informed ahead of even the, uh, the vehicle taking off. Then I also communicate to the, the district officer. What we have done here is we have a team made up of our auditors and then the technical staff who go and then inspect the uh, arriving consignment of uh, fertilizers and other chemicals. Then at the district, there's a district uh, Kudapek High Tech Task Force chaired by the district officer, the regional, uh, the district chief farmer. The, the best woman farmer, the district extension coordinator, quality control officer in the district, and then the, 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 the chief farmer. This, this constitutes the task force. They are the monitoring team within the district. At the community level, you have the community extension agent, the chief, the local chief, the best farmer uh, in the town, in the village or community the woman best farmer selected by the community and these uh, and then the uh, representative of the license buying companies who are also on the district committee as well as the community they do the monitoring at least three of the members will have to sign against us having received the consignment the district officer the bni uh, officer there and then the, even the police, they are involved. The offloading, everything is uh, checked to ensure that the exact quantity is delivered. So if a A is to take 20 bucks, depending on his acreage, they make sure that he gets the 20 bucks. Pharma C may have about 30 uh, uh, bucks because he's having 
maybe uh, 10 acres because it is three bags per, uh, per acre. He also takes his 30 and likewise they distribute. And then we, they help them actually apply the fertilizers and then we'll take back our uh, empty fertilizer bags. That will actually also prove that the fertilizer has actually been applied on the farm. Because we have told them that if you don't return the empty bag as evidence that the fertilizer has been applied, you will not get it next year. And I think they, they, that, that has really that has really helped. So they didn't do it on their own, they did it under the supervision of one community extension agents. So this is some sort of monitoring. Each farmer monitors his neighbor so that you cannot divert your fertilizer. And at all instances, so there is uh, a cocoa health and extension uh, officer there to actually supervise and oversee the application of the fertilizers. And community extension agents sensitize, demonstrate the application of the fertilizer and assist farmers to apply them. The number of bags that we give to a farmer per hectare is 7.5 bags. So if your farm size is 7.5 hectares, we multiply 7.5 times 7.5. If it is 2.5, we measure 2.5 by 7.5. And that will amount to the quantity of fertilizer that each farmer is supposed to get. Yes, we have our monitoring team. We have the district monitoring team and the regional monitoring team also come out and then they pick forms at random, they go to the field, we remeasure and check on the number of bags that we give to the farmers. The high tech, the Kodapec, is under the supervision of district tax forces. And these tax forces are also involved in checking the smuggling of fertilizers. Another scheme that is running alongside the free fertilizer program is the ongoing free mass spraying exercise being undertaken by Cocoa Board. The scheme, which was introduced in 2001-02, was to arrest the decline of cocoa production in Ghana caused by diseases such as merit and blackboard, and also pests like capsid, popularly known in Ghana as akate. Every chemical that is to be applied on cocoa be it a fungicide or an insecticide, will have to be approved by Cocoa Research of Ghana. If it is approved and then the EPA also gives a go ahead, then the supplier or the importer can actually bring in that chemical or product. If not, you can bring it. Farmers do not pay anything. It is the government or Cocoa Board for that matter which actually uh, bears the cost of everything, both the chemicals and also the machines, the uh, protective clothing that the gangs use, the allowances, everything is borne by Cocoa Board. So the Kodra Peg has divided the Cocoa Green Ranges into two. Some areas we are doing black pole and some areas we are doing capsid control. But whether it's capsid control or not, we do provide strategic stock of chemicals for outbreak of pests in the capsid areas and also provide strategic stocks for the fungicides, which is the chemical we use to control the black pork. Distribution of inputs is ongoing. As of now, we have received 2,730 cuttings of Akatimasa, which will be enough for the first round of spraying. And then we have also received some spraying machines. 
for distribution to the various gangs to assist their work. We have also received premise fuel, uh, which is about 17,757 liters, which will be enough for all the spraying gangs. We have also received some protective clothing, overalls, hats, goggles, for distribution to all the gang sprayers, because government is very particular about their health so that they will use it before they spray the farmers' farms. This, when it comes to the spraying, we have got gangs, spraying gangs. It's a spraying gang supervisor, but these are all, they all operate under the community or the district task force. Cocoa's free fertilizer scheme has been received with great excitement and appreciation by the farmers, who already are petitioning Cocoa to ensure the scheme continues. To go around, the farmers are really, really happy about the whole uh, project. But they are rushing. You see the rush for this and how they are applying. They are very, very appreciative of whatever Cocoa Board and the government is doing now. So, in fact, the, all, the entire region, they have endorsed it very, very well. I wish the farmers are here to, <laughs> to support me. But honestly, the exercise has been... Uh, I don't know whether to use the word, even success is uh, an underestimated word. It has brought new life into the cocoa cultivation to our farmers uh, this year. I remember the other day we went to one of the communities and uh, we were just asking them, what, just as you have asked me, and then they said, at least this year they have seen the chemicals. <laughs> because if you don't have fertilizer, you can't have a smoke. And so far as Ghana Cocoa Board started with this application, a lot of the youth are coming into the cocoa system. I was going to go to the house, and I was going to go to the house, and I was going to go to the house, and I was going to go to the house, and I was going to go to the house, and I was going to go to the house, and I was going to go to the house, and I was The endorsement by the Ghanaian cocoa farmers for the free fertilizer distribution and mass spraying scheme implies the majority are happy to apply good agronomical practices and application of appropriate fertilizer as prescribed by Cocoa Board. Farmers are allowing their aged or diseased cocoa trees to be cut and replanted with new high yielding, low gestation cocoa hybrid seedlings with the support of Cocoa Board. In all, Cocoa Board in 2014 distributed the following quantities of fertilizer across the seven cocoa producing areas. Western North, 605,942 bags. Western South, 346,293 bags. Brong Ahafo, 294,289 bags. Ashanti, 191,194 bags. Central, 76,511 bags. Eastern, 71,993 bags. Volta region, which is the smallest of the cocoa producing areas, had 13,778 bags. So in total this year, our free fertilizer policy that uh, encompasses the supply of granular fertilizer, liquid fertilizers, and organic fertilizer, we were able to cover about 1 million hectares of cocoa. For the free mass spraying scheme, the following was distributed in 2014. Motorized spraying machines, 2,935 pieces. Insecticides, 101,894 cartons. Fungicides, 128,779 cartons. Respirators, 62,691 pieces. Overalls, 56,029 pieces. Besides cocoa being a business of a private farmer, it is also a mainstay of the Ghanaian economy. So I think uh, the uh, cocoa board and government uh, playing its part in, 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 in ensuring the sustenance of such an industry. This is, this is the largest employer of labor in the Ghanaian economy.
this change in farming attitude means in the long term the farmer will receive more yield from their cocoa farms resulting in increased revenue for the farmer and his family as well as attracting more of the younger generation to get involved in cocoa farming if our officers go around and they see that the farmer is practicing good agricultural practices why they'll give it, they'll give that farm the fertilizer and the information from the field is that since this free fertilizer thing started, a lot of farmers have become serious, clearing their farms, removing mistletoes so that they will qualify. Our district officers try to encourage them, our extension officers are working with them so that they can also practice their good, good agricultural practices and improve their farms. Cocoa farmers are a group of farmers who actually bring in a lot of uh, uh, foreign exchange. Recently, we went in to sign a $1.7 billion uh, 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 loan to help buy cocoa and run the industry. So if farmers are able to get some of these things, it will actually also increase their yield. And when uh, yields are increased, the farmer benefits because he gets more money. And when the farmer gets more money, it means that his yield has also increased. And then the, the increase in yield will also, at the end of the day, help Ghana sell more produce onto the international market, market and get more money to help the, the economy. You know, worldwide, there is a deficit in the production of cocoa. For example, in Indonesia, Cocoa farmers are shifting away from cocoa and are going to oil palm and rubber. This has created actually a deficit. And Ghana Cocoa Board will want to make sure we take advantage of this deficit and um, 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 also make sure we enhance and sustain production at the time that the world market price of cocoa is going up. We are actually now having uh, discussions with all the stakeholders in the industry especially the cocoa processors and the chocolate manufacturers, for them to understand that um, if we can sustain production, the only thing we have to do is also to make sure we have a stable price. Stable price that is attractive to the existing cocoa farmer who is already old and the young ones so that they get motivated to go into cocoa farming. For Cocoa Board, the acceptance of the farmer to the scheme means an increase in the volume of premium quality cocoa to meet the increasing demand on the international market in return for foreign revenue to be injected into the Ghanaian economy. This will give Ghana Cocoa Board the opportunity to continue to be a major foreign exchange earner for Ghana.